Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Spring is here and summer is quickly approaching and our Venus flytraps are starting to get thirsty. It's really a great time to start talking about watering Venus flytraps. Today we're going to be covering what types of water, where to get it, and how to measure the water that you're unsure of. I'm also going to share the equipment that I have found that makes my life much easier when it comes to watering. There will definitely be some tips and tricks here that's going to help you become a master at watering Venus flytraps. This is actually part two of a Venus flytrap watering guide. Once this video is over, if you've not already watched part one, make sure to check that out next. It'll pop up on the screen for you. In that video, we cover how much and how often to water your Venus flytraps. When you combine these two videos, you can master the art of watering Venus flytraps. I want to start off by talking about one of the first and most common mistakes that people make when caring for Venus flytraps, tap water. In most situations, you want to avoid tap water altogether. Tap water contains a lot of dissolved solids that are harmful to Venus flytraps. Most carnivorous plants are sensitive to nutrients and minerals in water. Tap water almost always contains high amounts of particles that will slowly kill your Venus flytraps or other carnivorous plants. Avoid tap water unless you've tested it with a TDS meter and it's under 50 parts per million. Don't worry, we're going to be talking more about TDS meters and what parts per million are. Before we talk about better options for water, I really want to discuss a TDS meter with you real quick. I'm going to be referencing TDS often in this video. TDS stands for Total Dissolved Solids, or particles of solids in the water. Venus flytraps do not like these particles and can slowly be killed if watered with water that contains a lot of them. A TDS meter is a way to measure the amount of dissolved solids in the water. Some methods of collecting water may require that you use a TDS meter to make sure that the water is safe enough for Venus flytraps. TDS meters are incredibly easy to use. You just dip the end into the water and it'll provide you a reading. Make sure that the water is room temperature as hot or cold water can give off false readings. The number on the meter will give you what's called the parts per million or PPM. If the meter reads 100 PPM, that means that there are 100 parts per million of dissolved solids in the water. Anything at 50 parts per million or higher is too much for Venus flytraps. Try to keep it under 50 or even better under 25 parts per million. You can see here that I'm measuring tap water versus tap water out of the zero water pitcher. These can be found on Amazon for around 15 bucks. I do have a link in the description if you want to go check that out for the one that I personally use. The cool thing about TDS meters is that you can also measure your drinking water to see if it's safe to drink. Usually a TDS meter will come with a guide that tells you where drinking water is safe on the spectrum. All right, the next thing that I want to talk about are some great sources of water that you can get for your Venus flytrap. But before we do that real quick, let's talk about how you can get your hands on your next or your very first Venus flytrap. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. Thank you so much for listening to that. I really appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and talk about some sources of water that I think are best for Venus flytraps. Stick around to the end because that's when I'm going to talk about my favorite option for watering your Venus flytraps for small to medium sized collections. And it's actually the one that I'm personally using right now for my 100 plant collection. One of the most common forms of water used for watering Venus flytraps is distilled water. You can get distilled water from big box stores like Walmart. The method of distilling water pulls out the vapor and leaves the dissolved solids behind, making the distilled water a great water source for Venus flytraps. You can find distilled water usually in the same area that bottled water is available. Keep in mind that spring and other types of bottled water do not work here as they have not been distilled. Oftentimes spring water actually has added minerals for taste, which can make it even worse for Venus flytraps. If you can't find distilled water at big box stores, this is becoming more and more of a problem. You can buy a water distiller. The pros are that they can produce hundreds of gallons of water without needing any filtration or anything. The cons is that they can be a little bit loud, use a lot of energy, and put out a lot of heat. It takes about four hours to distill a gallon of water. Once the water is distilled, there is some cleanup involved with the dissolved solids that are left behind in the tank. The heat could also potentially be a pro in the wintertime, but definitely a con in the summertime. They run at about $80 and can be a great tool for producing your own distilled water for probably smaller collections due to the amount of time that it takes just to get one gallon of water. Another great option is a reverse osmosis system. 
They can be sold to be used below your sink or there are countertop versions available. There's a wide selection of reverse osmosis systems and more research will likely need to be performed before committing to this option. There are different levels of RO filter types and the prices for these systems can range quite a bit. I've linked a system below that I thought was great in the description, but for full disclosure, I've not actually used this system myself personally. An RO system is probably the best option for larger carnivorous plant collections as it can produce the most amount of water in the quickest amount of time. A lot of people also like to collect rainwater and this can be a great option. In most areas, rainwater can be collected at very low TDS readings. I strongly recommend though that if you're going to use rainwater to make sure that you test it with a TDS meter first. Rainwater that's collected from a roof or gutter can absorb dissolved solids and even potentially some hazardous chemicals if a roof or gutter has been treated. It's also possible that in the more polluted areas that the water falling from the sky just naturally has a higher amount of dissolved solids and won't be great for Venus flytraps. Always check the TDS reading before using rainwater. All right, I saved my favorite water source for last. This is the water source that I use personally. But real quick before we get to that, if you're finding this video helpful, please make sure to like the video and sub to my channel. I'm trying really hard to start my own carnivorous plant nursery someday and liking the video, subbing to my channel, and watching this video to the end are huge in helping support my dream. Another great way you can support the channel is to use the thanks button below the video to give a monetary contribution. No money, no problem. Just like, sub, or watch this video are huge helps in supporting my dream. Let's get back to the water source. My personal and favorite way to obtain water for my carnivorous plant collection is the zero water pitcher. Don't get the zero water pitcher confused with Brita or other popular water filtration systems on the market. Most water filtration systems do not pull out the dissolved solids. The zero water pitcher uses a special five stage filter that eliminates all the dissolved solids. This is the only pitcher that I have found that will produce pure water completely ready for carnivorous plants. My tap water is around 80 to 110 parts per million. I can get 45 to 50 gallons from just one filter before I need to replace it. This number will range a bit based on how much dissolved solids are in your tap water. The higher the parts per million, the lower amount of gallons that the filter will be able to produce. The 12 cup pitcher with a filter is only about $30. After that, the filters by themselves only cost about $15 each. Even if you are only getting 20 gallons per filter, that's still under a dollar per gallon for distilled water. Most big box distilled water starts off around a dollar per gallon, and I've even seen it as high as a dollar 60 per gallon. And that's if you can even find it. Personally, I think the zero water pitcher quickly becomes a no-brainer for carnivorous plants, or in this case, Venus flytraps. Not only in most cases will the water be more affordable, but you don't have to drive to the store to br and bring home more of those plastic gallon jugs. It only takes about 15 minutes to make a gallon of water. My life is pretty chaotic. Having a pitcher and a filter that can produce a gallon of pure water in 15 minutes is a huge deal. I just don't have the time to collect large amounts of water or make numerous trips to the store. Especially when there's a high probability that when I get to the store, they will be out of distilled water, sending me to another town over in search of the Holy Grail. To sweeten the deal, the zero water pitcher comes with a TDS meter so that you know when you need to change your filter. This is probably a $10 to $15 value and eliminates the need for you to go out and get a new TDS meter. Zero water pitchers are actually pretty simple to use. You fill up the basin and the water filters and goes into the pitcher. You can fill the basin and walk away. No need to sit there and babysit. Once the basin empties, you fill it one more time to get a full pitcher of pure water. I love that you can just fill it and walk away. I then transfer the water into my gallon jugs and store it accordingly. I can get five or six gallons filled throughout the day without spending too much time actually at the pitcher. This is a major, major plus for me. If you're interested in getting a zero water pitcher, you can actually get them on Amazon. I have a link in the description below so you can get your hands on one. It's probably worth your time to check them out as they go on sale often and you might be able to catch a pitcher and filter for only around $20. Even without the sale, for me, they're still completely worth it. Even if you only have one Venus flytrap, the water from a zero water pitcher is great for drinking, CPAP machines, and even putting in your essential oil diffusers or humidifiers. Using pure water in a diffuser or humidifier will ensure that you don't have all that hard water buildup you see on the inside. But wait, there's more. Okay, I'm just kidding. The zero water pitcher infomercial is over. But in all seriousness, I can't even tell you how much time and money this little pitcher has saved me over the last couple of years with my carnivorous plant collection. If you want to learn more about this pitcher, I did do a full in-depth review with lots of great tips and tricks, and I also linked that video in the description below. The last piece of equipment I recommend for watering is a long neck watering can. When I first started watering my plants, I just watered directly out of the gallon jug. 
actually became pretty good at aiming water out of the milk jug, but I was still spilling a lot of the precious pure water. Someone recommended that I buy a long neck watering can. What a game changer. The ability to aim your flow of water meant a lot less spilled water. It makes tray watering so much easier, especially if you have more than a few to water in close proximity to each other. I've linked a few that I really like below on Amazon. They're pretty affordable as well. You can even go to your local big box store and find a small watering can for usually under $10. If you've not seen part one of this watering guide, I strongly recommend that you check that out. It should be popping up on the screen for you here soon. If you already saw part one of this video, you should be well on your way to mastering watering Venus flytraps. There are other aspects of care that you'll need to master before becoming a master Venus flytrap grower. Check out the playlist that popped up on the screen for the next part of the Venus flytrap care. Thank you so much for being here, and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye!